Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted, and today we're gonna to be doing kind of a quick and easy uh, test on wet spots or kind of a demo on wet spots, kind of what they are, how to avoid them, and basically do a little bit of a demo to show you kind of how they happen. Uh, and again, kind of highlight or bring attention to an area that a lot of beginners really get stuck on. Uh, and of course, that's wet spots. And if you don't know what wet spots are, it's the little air bubbles that form uh, on the sides of candles. So once you make your candles, you pour them and you let them sit for a couple days, you begin to notice there's like big open air bubbles that kind of form on the sides. And if you don't know what that's from, it's basically due to the wax shrinking and popping from the glass. Now I've talked about this in a lot of different videos, which is why I wanted to go into a little bit more in depth demo and kind of explanation on these just to show you kind of how they happen and why you shouldn't be too concerned or too focused on these. Now, of course, a lot of beginners get stuck on this one because you think you did something wrong and you definitely did not. Uh, what it is and what we're using right here in this demo is a non-shrinking soy wax. This is Golden Brands or GB464. Uh, it's supposed to be a non-shrinking wax, but even with a non-shrinking wax, you can still get wet spots or the air bubbles in the sides of these. And I've got two different ones here and these I just poured yesterday. They've been sitting for about 24 hours. Uh, so they're still cooling just a little bit more, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of accelerate the process and I'm going to throw these into the fridge, which is going to create kind of a cold environment, uh, which is where wet spots tend to happen. So basically the reason why I'm doing that is wax, when it heats up, it expands. Uh, it, it grows a little bit more. And then as it cools down, it begins to shrink and certain waxes will shrink more than others. Paraffin being the worst one for that. So what happens is when you pour your wax at 170 degrees, 180, 170 degrees, uh, you're pouring it into the jar. The jar heats up and as it cools, uh, it cools either, depending on the room that you're in, rapidly or slowly. And as it cools down, it kind of shrinks down in the glass and eventually it will shrink just a little bit and just enough to where it will pop from one side of the glass or around the container completely. And probably the biggest reason I want to do this demo is to show people that uh, going for that perfection uh, is definitely something that's gonna drive you crazy. And it definitely drove me crazy in the beginning too because I wasn't sure what was happening with that one. But once I realized, and pretty much any beginner, once they make several batches, you realize that it's just one of those problems that you really can't get away from and a lot of people just move away from it. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna go ahead and write on the side of this one. Uh, this one looks like it has 100% adhesion. So I'm gonna go ahead and write I'm gonna go ahead and write 100% on that one just because I, I wanna know which one this is. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna throw this one in the refrigerator and I'm gonna let it sit for probably six to eight hours just to see what happens. Uh, replicate kind of in cold environment. Basically, if you're shipping candles in the winter time, you're gonna run into this problem. So if they're on a FedEx truck, UPS truck, or whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, these are gonna be sitting inside of a truck that's really cold. 30, 40, 50 degrees, depending on where you are. And over time, that wax is gonna shrink inside the truck during shipping. So if you send a candle out that has 100% adhesion, by the time it reaches the customer's house, you could have wet spots that form. And I just want to do this demo to show people that it's kind of out of your hands. Even if you make a candle that is 100%, and this one has 100% adhesion, it's perfect all the way around. You really can't get away from it at a certain point, which is why I think a lot of people just kind of need to see this and it, you eventually just get over that. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the fridge right now and then we'll come back when this is done. Okay, so it's been a couple hours and I've got the 100% candle right there. And you can see, let's see if I can get this to focus. There you go. You can see right there, this is only a couple hours in the fridge and you can see the separation that's already begun to happen in the bottom of the jar. And this is probably a perfect demo and a good representation of why you shouldn't worry too much about wet spots. Uh, when it comes down to it, there's really not much in your control uh, to prevent something like that. Uh, this candle, as you saw earlier, was 100% adhered. It was perfect adhesion all the way around and just a couple hours in a cold environment, it started to create the wet spots. And again, that's only due see if you can see the corner right there where it starts to happen. So again, 
that's just being in a cold environment. So if you were shipping these from Arizona and you were shipping them to upper Maine during the winter time, you're gonna go from a hot environment where the wax is fully expanded and hitting every single corner of the jar. And you're gonna be going to a cold area where that wax starts to shrink. And this is a non-shrinking wax. So uh, it shouldn't have shrunk that much. Even non-shrinking waxes such as soy or 464 are still gonna shrink a little bit. Now with something like 6006 or 4627, 4625 especially, the harder paraffins and the harder the wax goes, the more it's gonna shrink. So it's definitely something that it, it just drives people crazy in the beginning. You see those wet spots, uh, it looks like you've done something wrong. And a lot of people really go through and try to fix that stuff and spend a lot of time like heating jars up in the oven or letting your candles cool inside of the box. Now those are definitely things that can help uh, from the very beginning, uh, and it looks nice. Uh, some of those methods I use, I've never heated my jars, I've never been a big fan of it. Uh, it to me, it just adds another 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes prep time that, that I could use to make more candles. So I don't like to spend a lot of time on that one. The only one that I will do is letting candles cool inside of the box. So if you've ever ordered uh, a case of jars from Candle Science, they come 12 in a box and they come in the little inserts, almost like a, like a six pack of soda or something like that, where they have the individual department or in the, where they have the individual compartments. And when I pour my candles, I will put the 6006 ones back into those little boxes just because it helps slow down the cooling process uh, and it will help with some of the sinkholes that 6006 is notoriously known for. So aside from cooling inside of the box, I really don't pay too much attention. I have a lot of people ask me about that one. How do I get rid of wet spots? What do I do with them? And for me, I just don't worry about them. I know it's gonna happen. There are things you can do in the beginning, like pouring wax a little bit cooler, uh, 6006, 464, uh, anything like that. If you tend to pour them a little bit cooler, give the wax a little bit more time in the melting pitcher to kind of cool down and contract a little bit, uh, it will help a little bit more with adhesion and sometimes with uh, wet spots as well. It help with glass adhesion or uh, sinkholes. But again, aside from that, I really don't go too much further with trying to prevent the wet spots. And when it really comes down to it, most customers either aren't gonna notice or they just don't care as long as they have a good candle out of it. Uh, and I mentioned uh, in another video that the next time you're in a store, uh, the next time you're in a store that sells a bunch of different candles, just go through and look at all the different ones that are on the shelves and you're gonna see a lot of wet spots in those. Uh, those are big companies that spend a lot of time and a lot of research and development and even they're not getting away from that just because it's something that happens. So again, I hope that was helpful. If uh, you have any questions or if you've got some other tips and tricks to kind of help with wet spots, please let me know in the comments down below. And of course, I mentioned in the last video that I just launched the two 17 page eBooks, how to make, so uh, how to make soy candles with 464 and how to make candles with 6006. A lot of people have picked them up so far, so I can't thank you enough for reaching out and, uh, and getting those. A lot of good feedback with that one. And again, I put those out just for people who really don't want to follow video a lot of, I mean, everybody's got different learning methods. Some people can learn by watching videos or anything like that. And some people are definitely all about uh, the written form, seeing pictures and reading through it. Uh, so I wanted to get something out there for people that, uh, that were kind of wanting something other than the videos. So if you do want one of the eBooks, I've got them listed in the video description down below. They're on my website, stanleyhandcrafted.com. And of course you can reach out to me on any of the social media platforms, the DIY Facebook group, Facebook, Instagram, and of course my website and the email, everything is listed down below. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.